Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. Today is February 1st, which makes today the very first day of Hidden Figures, aka daily videos on forgotten black women in history. Super excited to be starting off this week's Hidden Figures with Delilah L. Beasley. Delilah Leontium Beasley, born September 9th, 1867, and died August 18th, 1934, was a historian and newspaper columnist for the Oakland Tribune in Oakland, California. Beasley was the first Black American woman to be published regularly in a major metropolitan newspaper, and Beasley was also the first to present written proof of the existence of California's Black pioneers in her book, Slavery to California, which was published in 1918, and in her other book, The Negro Trailblazers of California, which was published in 1919. Her career in journalism spanned more than 50 years and was hugely impactful on the print industry, and she detailed the racial problems in California and the heroic achievements by Black Americans to overcome them during the late 19th century and early 20th century. Beasley was born in Cincinnati, Ohio on September 9th, shortly after the end of the Civil War in 1867. As a child, Beasley attended segregated Cincinnati public schools and developed an interest in journalism. By the age of 12, she had begun to write and publish short social notices in the local black newspapers, as well as work as a correspondent for some white newspapers, such as the Cleveland Gazette. Yet as the oldest of five children, Beasley was required to find a full-time job when her parents died while she was a teenager, causing her to drop out of school to become a maid and hairdresser. Beasley later studied hydrotherapy and medical gymnastics and became a massage therapist for pregnant women. She worked in Chicago, New York, and Michigan, eventually settling in Berkeley, California in 1910 to work as a nurse for a former patient. Beasley never lost her love for journalism, however, and in 1883, she began writing about church and social activities for a black newspaper in Ohio called The Cleveland. Three years later, she published her first column in the Cincinnati Inquirer. After moving to California at the age of 39, Beasley began attending history lectures and researching at University of California, Berkeley, and writing essays for presentations at local churches. She trained herself in historical research, visiting private and public libraries, exploring archives, and conducting oral interviews with elderly Black residents about their personal experiences in California. In 1910, the Black American population in Oakland was a little over 3,000 people, a community which, despite its small number, supported many institutions and community formation in the 1910s and 1920s. Among these institutions were Black-owned small businesses, churches, and private social welfare organizations. In addition, several Black newspapers were published in Oakland at that time, including the Oakland Sunshine, which began publication in 1902, and the Western Outlook, established in 1894. In 1915, Beasley began, began excuse me, a column exclusively for a Black audience in the Oakland Sunshine. Inspired by her column, Delilah Beasley went on to chronicle Black American firsts and notable achievements in early California in her book, The Negro Trailblazers of California. Beasley's Trailblazers book included diaries, biographical sketches, poetry, photographs, old papers, conversations with pioneers, and a comprehensive history of early legislation and court cases, giving many hundreds of names of Black Americans in California from the pioneer period to the late 19th century. Many of these Black Americans had been written out of history up until this point. Beasley self-published and distributed the book herself, which she had painstakingly researched over the course of nine years, putting herself into severe debt. Her book is recognized as the first to compile proof of Black American communities in California, dating back to the 1800s. Despite her being put into debt and doing everything herself, her work on the Negro Trailblazers was well received, and by 1925, Beasley was writing regularly for the Oakland Tribune, making her the first Black American to be published regularly in a major metropolitan newspaper. At the Tribune, she authored the Sunday column called Activities Among Negroes, often spending over 40 hours a week collecting material about Black American churches, social events, women's clubs, 
literary societies, and local as well as national politics. By highlighting such items, she served the larger goal of demonstrating the capabilities of Black Americans while building a strong readership for her column and a network of sources from whom she could count on receiving information. Having a regular column in a white daily newspaper also gave Beasley the ability to generate publicity for Black political struggles and activities, and she often confronted misconceptions and contradictions as a newspaper journalist. Recognizing her large platform and access provided by the Tribune, Beasley regularly traveled around the country to persuade the editors of other major newspapers to stop using racist language in print. And through her vast impact on print media, the mainstream white American youth, excuse me, the mainstream white American press stopped using words like darky and the N-word in print, as well as beginning to capitalize the N in Negro, which now we're seeing all this conversation around like capitalize the B in Black. A lot of this has roots in Delilah L. Beasley's work. She also regularly spoke at rallies and protests against racism. Beasley never married and belonged to many civic organizations that advocated for the advancement of Black Americans and women, including the NAACP, the Alameda County League of Women Voters, the, Nas the National Association of Colored Women, the Alameda County League of Colored Women Voters, the Public Welfare League of Alameda County, the League of Na Nations Association of the California Federated Women's Club, the Oakland Council of Church Women, and the Linden Center Young Women's Christian Association. She also formed her own group to encourage literacy amongst Black Americans, entitled the Delilah L. Beasley Literary and Improvement Club. In 1920, Oakland's Black Club Women, I love that phrase, which I never heard before doing this research, Black Club Women, I love that, including Delilah Beasley and others, organized the Linden Center Young Women's Christian Association, YWCA, to combat the racism of the all-white YWCA branches in the city. So they made one that was specifically for Black women. The Linden Center YWCA provided an array of services, including religious and vocational training, adult education, counseling services, and a full calendar of recreational and cultural programs for Black Americans. In the mid-1920s, Beasley was named a National Historian of the National Association of Colored Women, or the NACW. In 1933, it was at Beasley's public urging through her column that California State Assemblyman William F. Nolan, then assistant publisher of the Oakland Tribune, and Assemblyman Frederick M. Roberts of Los Angeles County introduced an anti-lynching bill that passed unanimously in both branches of the California legislature. It was the state's first mob violence law. She literally got an anti-lynching bill, a mob violence law, past due to her influence with this column. She was publicly writing in the column about how like, this is wrong, it has to go. Influence, a, a real influencer. Beasley continued writing her column for the Tribune until her death in 1934. Delilah L. Beasley died on August 18, 1934 at Fairmont Hospital in San Leandro, California. The cause of death was, excuse me, the cause of death was listed as hypertension and heart disease. Her home at that time was listed as being in Oakland, California, and she was laid to rest at St. Mary's Cemetery in Oakland. 20 years later, a monument was erected and a care endowment put on her for a tombstone with a simple epitaph, author and columnist, a native of Ohio, and for 25 years, a resident of Oakland. Veteran and student journalist honored in the Hall of Fame and Scholarship Awards of the Cincinnati chapter of the National Association of Black Journalists received the Delilah L. Beasley Scholar Awards. And you guys know I enjoy reading quotes when I can find them, so I'm just going to read you guys uh, a quote that Delilah Beasley stated about the black gold miners of the late 1840s. A history of the Negro people of California would be incomplete without mention of the mining men who came in 1849. There were at one time several hundred Negro miners working claims on Mormon and Mokaloom Hill at Placerville, Grass Valley, and elsewhere, excuse me, in the California mountains. One such man was R Moses Rogers, a mining expert who was considered one of the best mining engineers in the state. He was also a metallurgist and owned a group of mines at Hornetus. The colored miners rarely took a chance in buying mining stock. He had more sacred duties to perform with his money. 
He either used it to pay for the freedom or liberty, liberty excuse me, of himself, his family, or other loved ones in faraway Dixieland. If not that, then he contributed largely from his diggings to assisting the executive committee, committee of the Colored Convention in their struggles to secure legislative enactments in the interest of the Negro race in California. So I just wanted to read that as an example of some of the type of writing that she did. She, she made very insistent writing on the roles of the Black Americans in California and the things that we were doing and accomplishing there, which was being, in fact, written out of history. So um, you guys have heard me. I've done other hidden figures on uh, women in the West, and I also did um, for the Black Americans. I visited some Black American museums in the West, especially the Black Buffalo Museum in Living Rough, Kansas. And a lot of these names that are in these museums now we would not know about without Delilah L. Beasley, you know, the fact that you cannot print, you know, the N-word and you can't print stuff like darkies and you can't print certain things in print media is because of Delilah L. Beasley. Um, and again, she was also the first Black American that had syndication in a major metropolitan newspaper. So Delilah L. Beasley, hugely influential, hugely influential on history, hugely influential in archiving, hugely influential in journalism and print media, uh, and a hidden figure. So day one of Hidden Figures. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. I will be back with another hidden figure tomorrow. See you guys tomorrow. Peace.